We spend most of our lives working just to go on brief vacations. Two surfers had just gotten out of the water, could not have been happier. And I thought to myself, that's it. I need to be them. But what if you could turn vacation into a full-time job? We get most of our ingredients from our backyard. And look at the total, zero dollars, woohoo! <laughs> These travelers made their fantasies into reality. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Looking good. Scaffolding is really unique. There's really nothing like it throughout the world. We get a lot of people that they say, can I join the Mile High Club? I say, no, we're only at 500 feet, so just don't do it in my bar, okay, please. Escape to paradise now, because Life's a beach. For some, air travel can be a real struggle. Lines, bad food, delays. Alan Templeton used to hate flying. But now he always travels first class. Because his private jet is permanently parked 40 feet up in the lush jungle canopy. I moved to Costa Rica and I built this. That 727 perched in the treetops? That's Alan's dream home. His passion for planes landed him the good life. Running an airplane beach bar. And racing through the canopy in Manuel Antonio. The most exciting thing about living in Costa Rica is that you can have a fantasy and make it reality. I, I think next time I'm going to wear a seatbelt. Costa Rica is a small country. It's just about the size of West Virginia. We have two oceans. We have the Caribbean on one side, the Pacific on the other. We have uh, perhaps a dozen volcanoes. Some of them are erupting. Manuel Antonio is right here on this very small peninsula. Less than three square miles, Manuel Antonio packs in more of Mother Nature's variety than anywhere else on Earth. Rainforest, mangroves, marshlands, and of course, the beach. The water is perfect. Every day of the year, I can go swimming. Big difference between my life here and most of my friends in the States is that 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. But Alan wasn't always the captain of the Costa Rican canopy. Back in the 70s, this business school grad's flight path was full of cloudy skies. I'm from Connecticut. I was really tired of the life where everybody was dressing up, everybody was cutting lawns on weekends. So I just said there has to be something better than this, and I joined Peace Corps. Got transferred to Costa Rica, and I was in paradise. The sense of freedom that I'd been searching for, I realized that I had found it here. Costa Rica, during the 70s, had a very fast-growing economy. I just said I have to get into business. Setting up shop in paradise is a whole lot easier than you'd think. Foreign business owners in Costa Rica get visas faster, and taxes? How about none for eight whole years? Costa Rica is unique in Latin America that they are very open and very tolerant of foreigners in business. Allen decided his ticket to paradise was catering to the quarter of a million annual visitors at the most popular beach in Costa Rica, Manuel Antonio. But he needed a twist to rise above the competition, something big. I found the airplane as probably all of Costa Rica found it when they were taking off at the airport because it was sitting there between the two runways. They just junked it right there. I started thinking, but there must be something I can do with that. I mean, it's just so cool. I bought it for $3,000, moved it down here on a barge, turned it into Manuel Antonio's hottest pub, El Avion. Made a bar out of the wheel covers on the landing gear. The cargo area, where the cargo was taken out with parachutes, we turned that into a dance floor. This did a lot of service in Vietnam. 
And that may be the reason why there's quite a few bullet holes outside in the plane. I would say the most popular spot is right up here in the cockpit. We get a lot of people that, you know, they have too much to drink and they say, can I join the Mile High Club? I say, no, we're only at 500 feet, so just don't do it in my bar, okay, please. For me, three grand was the deal of the century. Inspired by the success of his airplane bar, Allen set his sights even higher, building himself a jet set fantasy home with the best beach views in Manuel Antonio. This is a little bit different than most people's homes. This is a Boeing 727 made in 1965. It's about 130 feet long. Come on in. Paneling here, it's teak paneling. We have managed to create a lot more space by lowering the flight deck down into the baggage compartment area. So now I've got all the room I, I would have in a normal house. Imagine this back in 1965. We had an aisle going down the middle with four seats. Now we've got beds. This is the cockpit over here. One of my favorite rooms. Pilot chair, the co-pilot's chair, and well, we've got another chair right there. Look at that. It uh, is probably more useful than the two we've got. But this picture-perfect panorama called for some major heavy lifting about 20 tons of it. I wanted to be able to put it up 40 feet in the air to get the good ocean view. In America, you would have all sorts of zoning regulations. You would never be allowed to put up a plane like this. Five big trucks came, brought all the parts. It looked like a crash site. It was an incredible gamble, I mean, because we didn't really even know what the design was going to be. And we came up with the idea of putting the landing gear on a pedestal. We got the 90-ton crane in here and managed to stick it right up there against the mountain. And it worked. To put this plane back together where it's sitting cost about $300,000. And Alan's only neighbors? Well, in Manuel Antonio, the locals like to say, there are more monkeys than people. Monkeys are sometimes up against the windows and tapping them and stuff. I mean, they've woken me up a number of times. And this high-flying visionary has dreamed up a new way to pilot the Monkey Skyway. This is my uh, jungle machine shop. We put together all sorts of things here. This is the Canopy Cruiser. We're giving it one of the first test drives. This has never been done before in Costa Rica. 60 feet off the ground, more or less. An electric motor. And the idea is completely different than a zip line because I can stop, I can start, go forward, go back, take all the pictures I want. It's the perfect ride to see the jungle. I've been four years working with Alan. The project is not perfect. It's not perfect. It's a little crazy. It's really uh, been uh, a kind of leap of faith to come down here and make this thing happen and do it. Alan ditched the snow forever and turned junk jets into his dream life in sunny Costa Rica. Probably the best thing I've done in my life is getting out of Connecticut and coming down here to the tropics. This is something like the Wild West. We are living that more antique life where we have a sense of freedom.